In July 2021, I switched to a flip phone. Hello? Yes, one of these. This isn't a completely stupid phone. It still has WhatsApp and Facebook, but if you've ever tried using those apps on this phone, you'll know that it's not even worth your time. I decided to settle for it as it had all the things that I thought I needed. But here I am six months later, still using this flip phone and I'm enjoying it. When I was deciding whether I wanted to get a flip phone, there were a few things that I was very hesitant about. One being social media. Where I used to be able to just take photos straight away and put them on social media for my friends to see, I can't do that anymore, but I'm not mad about it. We've all seen all the documentaries about social media and its impacts on our mental health. I don't think any of us would be surprised that a social media break is probably a good thing. Now, don't get me wrong, I can still access social media on my laptop if I really want to. Since you can now post photos on Instagram from your laptop, there is literally no requirement for me to have it on my phone. Not being able to post on social media immediately means that I'm more able to enjoy the moment with my friends and I'm less likely to just sit and think about, oh, how am I gonna post this on my Instagram story? I think for older generations this may seem pretty obvious, but I think for people my age and younger, posting on social media about everything that you do has become a norm and it's kind of taken over our lives. Now, while the map function may be an essential part of your phone for you, it definitely was for me. Shocker, but there are road signs. They exist and they are designed to help you get around. Driving without my Google Maps at first was really difficult, but now I feel like I actually can drive better as a result. I pay more attention to the roads. I feel more confident in navigating on my own, but for longer journeys, I generally just plan in advance. So I'll look on Google Maps on my laptop and note down the route. It probably takes me about five minutes. I just stick the little sticky note in my car and off I go. The next thing that may be really tugging at people is how do you listen to music if you don't have a smartphone? I have my Spotify playlists and all my Apple music and all da da da. I just have CDs. I've kind of always been a CD person, so this switch was probably the easiest of all of them. Of course, I love Spotify. It's great for finding new music and new artists, but I also just quite like putting CDs in. Yes, that does limit the amount of music I listen to, but I've been listening to the same music since I was 16 anyway, and I'm 21 now, so I don't think my music taste is gonna change anytime soon. I mean, worst case scenario, if I really wanna use Spotify, there is Spotify web player, and I do still have a laptop. Another concern is the speed of communication. Of course, if you have this little nine, oh, it's actually 12, 12 button, keyboard thing. So you basically have like many letters per button and you have to like press it four times to access the letter that you want to use. It can be pretty clunky but I'd say I've kind of got better at it. It's like the first time you used a QWERTY keyboard you were probably like how do I even do this and then now you're probably like a keyboard machine. It's the same sort of thing like it just requires practice. Another key function my phone had for me was Strava. To all you fitness freaks out there who know how much Strava can be kind of addictive, it's basically a fitness social media where you can record your runs and like cycles and swims and then you like share it on your feed and then your friends can give you little like kudos thumbs up. Normally when it's warmer I do quite like running and I love being able to track the speed at which I go at and like how far I go. I really needed an alternative there. Of course some people would just say well just don't track your runs but recording it really like motivated me to keep going. As a solution to not being able to track my runs, I bought myself a 30 quid Garmin running watch and it's actually much better because I can use it in the swimming pool. Whereas I couldn't have taken my phone to record my swims in the swimming pool, that would have ended pretty badly. So I used to run around the housing estate near me wearing this just so I could carry this. Right, I know it's cute but it's not running appropriate. It's like Cruella de Vil running down the street in the morning doing her 5k. 